All right, so at this point, you've um, you know, set up your project to begin work on MP1, but we're in this kind of awkward place where it's difficult to make any forward progress and to see if anything that we're actually changing is making a difference because nothing's compiling right now. Uh, and the reason is um, the test suites that we've provided you you can essentially think of them as having an interface with the rest of your code and currently certain parts of that interface are missing. And so if you look through this file, you know, we don't expect you to necessarily read the test suites and use them as a specification. That's why we had this MP writer for you to consume. Um, but there are pieces in here that are hints, you know, in addition to the write-up of things that you actually need to, to do. Um, and so what I'm going to do in this walkthrough is we're going to go through kind of the minimal set of changes we need to make to at least get the code to compile. That doesn't mean that anything's going to work uh, with the test suite. We just want to be able to get to the point where we can actually have the test suite compile and run. Um, now, there's a couple different approaches to doing this, right? One is to go through and to stub out the uh, the things that we, we need, right? Um, the other approach would be to comment out large parts of the test suite, and that might also work for you. So for example, um, the first uh, test that we have to pass here is a test that tests the design of this new course class that we're gonna create. Um, the summary class that we created in the past had a certain amount of information about each course, but now what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna build a course class that can model more of the full information that we have in these more detailed uh, JSON files that we have or JSON objects that we have for each course. And specifically, there's a couple of pieces of information that you're gonna need to display uh, really just one extra piece, which is the description that you're going to need to display and, and pull out of here. Okay, and so um, the place where we put models in this project is over here. And if you look, that's actually where it's expecting to find a model. So if you look at the imports, it's, it's looking in mp.models. Um, please keep that the same because we're, this is the exact test suite that we're going to use when we test your code. So it's important that we agree on the locations of things. So the models for this project are in this models directory. Um, and so let's just go ahead and, and add a file in here. We'll do new Java class and we'll call it course. Um, and Android Studio is gonna do the right thing. Now here's another important point. So this is a new file in our project and we do want to add it to Git, okay? Now here's what I'm gonna do. The right thing to do here is to hit add. But just to help us learn how to do this in multiple ways, I'm actually gonna say, oops, I hit cancel. We'll come back and add this when we do our commit. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so now I've got this course class, and you can see if I go over here, the error that I'm getting about the course not existing has now gone away, um, and now I'm still seeing a, a bunch of other errors down here that have to do with some other things I need to do, um, but that's okay. Um, I, I can, so one of the things I can do, well, actually, let, let's look at uh, what's gonna happen here. So let's actually go ahead and just comment out a big chunk of the rest of this, right? Um, and unfortunately, let's see, it looks like I have to do this kind of piecemeal. So I'm gonna comment this out. I think there's a shortcut that you can use somewhere to actually just sort of uh, comment out large chunks of code, but I don't remember what it is right at the moment, so I'm just gonna do it this way. Um, so I'm kind of commenting out each one of these tests individually, because I'm kind of not ready to work on them yet. Um, let's see, that's gonna work fine and then these helper functions down here, I'm gonna to have to comment out. Now, one thing you're gonna notice is that when I do that, I'm actually gonna create another error uh, up here. Well, let's just comment out for now this import. Um, now, keep in mind, again, whenever you're modifying or test suites, you have to be very careful because we're not gonna use your changes, right? I mean, we don't trust you to rewrite the test suites. I suspect what some of you might do if given that opportunity. So. Uh, instead, we always use our own test suite. So any changes you make to these test suites are going to be uh, overridden. So one of the things that, that you're gonna see is now a problem is I've commented out this helper function. Um, so let's, let's put that back because I actually need that in order to pass this first test, um, okay? And, and what's interesting though is that this is actually giving me some hints about what this course object needs to be able to do and we're gonna describe that. Um, but this course object uh, should, um, it looks like it actually needs to support a bunch of the same fields that the summary object supported, like a year, semester, department, title, uh, number, and title. Um, and then if you look up here, let's say I, I, I put this back, it's also going to need to, to support this description method. Um, and so for now, what I can do just to, to help myself get started, uh, I'll, I'll write, well, it's a java.com, okay, we'll get to that, is 
Um, this is actually a, a natural case to use extension. There aren't necessarily a huge number of those in Java, but this is a good one because the course, we actually wanted to inherit all the information that the summary already knows about. And so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just allow this to extend summary. Now, if you go over here, what you'll see is that immediately I get a bunch of these, um, this to, to, to work kind of out of the box, which is pretty good. Um, and then I'll, I'll comment this out and sorry, I'm gonna go up here. Oh, but I, 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 think I, I think I need that other helper method, yeah. Um, and so this would be kind of a good starting point, right? Where I would see, okay, uh, now simply by inheriting from summary, I've already got a year and a semester in a department, all those other fields that the summary already had. I need this one other thing, right? Uh, when I create a course. And so this is one of the first places where uh, we can do some, some imitation. One of the goals of this project is to, or this part of the project is to get you comfortable kind of uh, taking some existing code and extending it in some natural way. So I need a new class. I also am going to need some new fields. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stub this out. I don't want to give away too many hints, and this is not particularly uh, particularly difficult. Um, so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to say get description, and for now I'll just return an empty string. Um, and this is going to also whine about the check style stuff, and we'll, we'll get back to that. Okay. So good. So now I've got the this helper method that's used throughout this file is now working properly. Um, and that means that my test course class method will work properly. There might be like one other error in here. Uh, oh, did I, I must have commented out a brace that I need somewhere. Uh, is that up here? Let's see here. Let me try putting this. Yeah, it was right here. Okay. You'll probably do a better job at this than I did. Okay. And now I see a bunch of like unused things and dang, uh, whatever. I can ignore these. These are not going to bother me too much. Uh, let's try grading this and see what happens. Uh, we'll run this and um, it's going to take a minute to try to build the project. It, so keep in mind, again, our goal here is just get, to get to the point where anything works properly. Um, and so what we've done is... Uh, we're taking kind of a two-pronged approach. The first uh, thing we did is we, we've commented out a large part of the test suite. So a bunch of the tests aren't even gonna run. Um, that's fine. When we're getting started, that's okay. We actually kind of want to work incrementally. We can work on one test at a time this way, which is a pretty smart way of approaching the project anyway. Um, so I'm started, and actually the tests so that we provide are, are set up in that order. They're set up to you know design to kind of you work from the top down. So I'm gonna start off uh, with this just working on my, my course model and getting that to work. Um, once I have that working, then I'll go back and I'll, I'll fill in one thing uh, after another. So you'll see, okay, so this is, uh, it looks like I missed one of the other methods. Oh yeah, down here, let's, let's remove this one too because I don't wanna run this either. Uh, oh. Yeah, so I just, I just missed one of these. Um, okay, so I'll run this again uh, just to show you that the only methods that are gonna be displayed now will be the one test method that I left in there. Uh, oh, and now I, I have done other bad things. Yes. I'm terrible at commenting things out, commenting things out clearly. Uh, there we go. That looks better. OK. Um, so I'll run this one more time. OK. And, and you know, you really, you know, we really shouldn't be running the grader this way. I'll show you in just a sec about how to set this up so that I can run the test suite itself. Um, OK. Uh, oh, let's see here. Okay, so now it looks like, I, I think what I need is I think I need something, let's see here. Uh, I think I need one of these to exist. So here's what I'll do, uh, rather than, and here's, a, this is another strategy that you can use. Uh, rather than just fully commenting out the test, you can just return and then comment out the rest of the test code, uh, right? So I'm gonna, I need to remove this end of comment block. Now I think this is going to be happy. Um, so, you know, again, I can just, you know, uh, modify the test so that it doesn't, in this case, it doesn't do anything when it runs. It's just going to, it's going to run straight through. It's not going to cause me any trouble. Um, so, you know, again, this is, you know, the, one of the ways to get started on the project, right? Uh, go through all the documentation here. Okay, so now we have something that's at least compiling. You can see it's only um, running this one test and it thinks it passed the other tests because I put in that return statement, right? That's, that's fine, right? We got some check style issues that we need to clean up. Uh, I really wanna focus on this test course class test. Now, let me show you a couple things. Uh, the, when we gave you 
the MP to begin with, we gave you this test MP0 uh, uh, run configuration. Let me show you how to set one of those up for MP1. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down here. We're going to click on this little green arrow here and hit run MP1 test. That's going to, you know, run the entire test suite. And let's see if this is, yeah, it's going to run that on-click launch for some reason because we, we just commented that out. Um, that's going to run the course class. So it's running these two tests that it can find. When it's, when it's done, you're going to see it up here and now I can use it again. If I want to, I can do two things. First of all, I can rename it so it looks a little bit more like the other one. And then if I click on this store as project file, this is now going to be added to my uh, project repository so that it's actually available even if I would clone this machine, uh, this project on another machine. The run configurations are normally temporary. They're, they're stored in a non-permanent way. Um, but if you want to save them along with the project, which can be a good idea if you want to share them with other people, you want to use them on some other machine, this is the way to do it. All right, so now we have this test MP1. And, you know, now at this point, we can actually make forward progress. So now the next step would be, you know, start working through the write-up, figure out what we need to do in our course class in order to actually pass the test suite um, and figure that out. Once we've passed that test suite, then what we can do is we can move on and we can uncomment this next test um, and we can work on the, the server route, which is the next part of it. Uh, next, you work, work down here, there's, a, there's some tests for the client side uh, component, which you'll need to pass, um, the course activity. And so you kind of move test by test. And I would strongly recommend that this be how you approach this particular MP checkpoint. It's going to be much, much easier and more manageable if you go step by step, one at a time. Every time you uncomment one of these, you're going to find some new things that you need to fix. Um, maybe not every time, but, but frequently. So for example, let's say I'm done with the, um, the test for the let's say I'm done with the test for the, the course model and I'm ready to move on. This one, it turns out, doesn't actually have any, um, it, it's not gonna run, it's not gonna work properly right now, but it doesn't have any sort of, uh, doesn't cause any compiler uh, failures. Um, if I go through, I think the next one is going to, yeah, the next one I'm gonna have to add a method to the client and a callback so that this, uh, I can receive data of this particular type, right? So once I uncomment this, you'll see that now I've got some problems here because there's no get course method in client, and there's also the course client callbacks doesn't have a course response method either. Okay, so that's gonna be a problem. Um, and then once I uncomment the course activity one, now I see this problem where I don't have a, an activity created yet. We'll walk you through kind of the process of doing that as we get started on this. And this is sort of how things go as you move forward. Um, so, okay, last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a commit here. Um, and I'm going to show you, so, so here's, the, here's the thing, when you commit, it's going to tell you there's an unversioned file. Now this is something that I'm sure is going to cause a few of you some problems because you're going to forget to do this, you're going to push your code, but if you don't tell Git that you want to include this file, it doesn't come along with your push. And so when we try to grade it, course.java is missing and nothing good is going to happen at that point. And so what we need to do here, now this is because we forgot to click add when Android Studio asked. Like maybe we fat figured it and hit cancel. So this is our chance to, to fix that. Uh, so here what I'm gonna do is I just hit click on this and now the unversion file is included in my commit and will be included when I push later. Um, and so I can write sort of any commit message I want, you know, getting started, um, started on MP1 or whatever hit commit, might want to do both commit and push. Um, oh yeah, again, you can ignore this. This is just because of how I have this set up for the purposes of doing this demo. Um, and yeah, that's okay, just do it. Uh, no, I don't need to worry about the, the, the problems. I know what they are. Okay, so this is how to get started on, um, on MP1. And get to the point where, where something runs. Uh, what we'll do next is we're going to go through and there'll be, you know, a video for each component of the MP explaining a little bit more about uh, what you need to do.